Hey everyone, it's James O'Reilly with Dream Better English, episode number 16, and today I will be talking to you guys about manners, how we behave in social situations. So let's jump into it very quickly so we can help your listening skills, speaking skills, conversation, grammar, vocabulary, blah, blah, blah. Okay, first question. Um, examples of bad manners on the bus. For me, bad manners on the bus would be when I get on the bus and there is somebody taking two seats, one for themselves and one for their bags. And they are not moving their bags when you want to sit down. That's bad manners for me. Uh, another one would be what a lot of men do and perhaps I did it before, I, uh, I don't do it now, is what we call man spreading. It's where a man opens his legs and spreads his legs and is affecting the people on either side of him or the person beside him. It's the way, I feel it's the way that we are naturally built as men. Our legs tend to just, we feel more comfortable with our legs out, but we should be more conscious on public transport that we are affecting the people beside us. It's just bad manners. And of course, people playing their music too loud on a bad speaker, bad music on a bad phone. I don't need to listen to your your music, to be honest. So that's bad manners too. What about good manners? Good manners on the underground, let's say. Well, the obvious things. Giving your seat to somebody who is elderly, giving your seat to some, giving up, that's a phrasal verb, to give up, which means to uh, to give, give up your seat to somebody who needs it more than you. Maybe they have a lot of shopping, maybe they have a child, maybe they're pregnant, uh, maybe they just look like they need a seat. Um, that would be good manners. And I think on the underground as well, um, stepping away from the door to allow people exit and enter. I do not understand people who want to enter the train before people have left. Bad manners, bad manners. I can't stand it. That's one thing I hate. That's one one of the ones I hate is people getting on the train before people have gotten off. And another one I hate is people who jump the queue. So that is when you're waiting for something and then somebody comes later and they jump in front of you. Hate it. I totally hate it. Uh, and I'm sure you guys do. And I'm sure you would never do it yourselves. Hmm. Okay. What about someone, if I know someone who is rude? Well, uh, to be honest, I can't think of somebody that is rude. And if somebody was rude i i would probably say in a nice way um that was that was a bit that was a bit rude maybe maybe you didn't mean to be rude but what you did actually was rude even if you didn't want to be rude it was rude and they should be able to take it and yeah recognize that they were being rude and of course i i am guilty and i have been told by my wife or something, oh, that's considered rude here, or you shouldn't do that. And you go, okay, I, I won't do it again. Uh, what about um, older people? Is it important to be polite to older people, even though they are often rude? Well, it depends. In, in the UK and Ireland, nowadays, I mean, before you would be, you would just accept, okay, they are older, um, we need to just be more polite to them. But I think nowadays people are more honest and selfish and individuals, independent. And they will think that respect needs to be earned. And I am not going to give you respect just because you are older. So if you're being rude, I'm going to let you know. I don't care what your age is. You're rude. You're rude. And that's it. Whereas I've lived in Turkey and there is a lot of respect for older people. And you do perhaps see people taking advantage of this, older people, and being a bit more rude. And there's nothing you can do. You're not out of respect for older people. You are not going to say anything. So it really does depend. Uh, 
you know, maybe in your own country you could say, hey, that's rude, but I do believe that it's important, well, for me, if I'm in a different country to go with the behavior of the other country, even if it's, sometimes we have to bite our tongue, which means you don't say anything when you really want to. You bite your tongue. Your tongue. Um, is there anything which is r- isn't rude, but it should be considered rude? I can't think of anything at the moment. Um, I do know that spitting is acceptable in some countries, and I find it quite disgusting. But they find it disgusting to swallow the spit. So, who's right? Who's wrong? I'm not entirely sure. Uh, And what about when we see somebody who is rude in a public place? Should we tell the person you're being rude? It depends. I think if you live in a busy city with a lot of people, uh, you're going to be telling people all day, hey, that's rude, you shouldn't do that. And you never know when you live in a busy city, there's a lot of um, strange or odd people. You're not sure how they're going to react. Um, But in a smaller town or village or a smaller city, yes, I think it would be more acceptable or easier to say to somebody, listen, what you did was was very rude. But there you go. Anyway, just a quick podcast. Uh, I hope you got a few bits of vocabulary and a few expressions to help you with your listening. I'll be back again very soon with a new topic for your listening experience and I'll talk to you guys very soon. Okay, take it easy. Bye-bye.